While I understand that DSA can be a little bit tricky, it is also one of the most important things in the field of tech. Being good at DSA means that you are a good problem solver by default and a lot of companies are looking for that when they let's say want to hire a person for a technical role. DSA rounds are there for most of the engineering roles, be it web development or DevOps or mobile development, front end, back end, AI, ML, it doesn't matter, it's there in all the fields. While I understand all of us know the importance of DSA, in this video I am going to share some tips with you on how you can learn DSA as a beginner and I am also going to share some of my personal tricks that I used when I used to prepare for any DSA round in any interview. So do make sure to watch this video till the very end and I will see you on the other side. Now when we talk about data structures and algorithms, the DSA, it's not just theory. Most of the times what I prefer is that you should pick one language, just one language and you should first get better at it before even worrying about DSA. A lot of students ask what programming language to choose for DSA and my answer always remains the same. Choose whatever you are good at and whatever language you like. Language always comes first and then the DSA. With that being said, let me now share some tips with you. Tip number one, time. Mastering anything takes three things. First is patience, second is discipline and third is effort. You should not get frustrated when you are not able to solve a problem and you should definitely not go directly looking for solutions online. Just try to give it some time. Try to give yourself some time. What my general approach for this is that I usually give myself one hour to solve any problem. If I am not able to let's say solve a problem in that one hour, only then do I go online looking for solutions. You know a lot of students at beginner stage often get worried and overwhelmed about the time they are taking to solve a single problem. You can't be the best on day one. Tip number two, don't get obsessed with the most efficient solution. Having something is always better than having nothing. If in any case you feel that your solution is not good enough, worry not, just focus on solving the problem first and then feel free to compare your solution with others. That there is your learning curve. Just know that humans tend to learn from their mistakes, so don't be afraid to make mistakes. Tip number 3. Be strong with your fundamentals. As I said before, choose a language first, be good at it and only then focus on DSA. Frankly, if your basics are not right, you are not going anywhere. Tip number 4. Use a pen and paper. Try to visualize the problem without even writing a single line of code. You know, try to draw the entire flowchart or whatever on the paper first. You know, try to visualize the problem because each and every algorithm that is there can be drawn into a flowchart. Tip number 5. Run some dry runs on your code. You know, whatever algorithm you drew as a flowchart in the previous tip, try to, you know, pass some values to it and see if the output is coming right or not out of it. Tip number 6. Don't compare yourself to others. It might be that they are learning faster than you or it might be that their solution is better than you. So what? We all have our own pace, right? So just focus on your own learning and see how you can improve it. Try to compare your today's self with your yesterday's self but not with others. Tip number 7. Try to take breaks. A 5 to 10 minutes break every 1 hour is generally considered good. It will overall increase your productivity by a lot. Tip number 8. Keep moving. If you are stuck with some data structure or some algorithm, just skip it for the time being and move on to the next one. Once it is done, come back to the previous one, right? Don't just get stuck at one position because that will result in a lot of waste of time. And the final tip, tip number 9. Do not think about the placements when you are learning DSA. You know, once you know DSA, then you should start thinking and strategizing, you know, how to practice DSA, how to improve your DSA to crack certain interviews, but don't think about it as a beginner, as a learner. Now, all these tips are going to help a lot of beginners because I get a lot of questions from students where they tell me that they are not able to understand, you know, certain data structures and algorithms problems or they are taking too much time to solve them. So is it normal? It's completely normal. You just have to give it time. So keep these steps in mind. Now that you have learned DSA, the next problem that comes is how to prepare for those DSA interview rounds. 
Don't worry about that. I've got you covered. Now I'm going to share four steps with you on how you can prepare for those DSA rounds and interviews. And this has been my personal method. The first step is to time all the questions that you're solving for practice. Because generally when we give interviews, we usually have about 15 to 20 minutes to solve each and every question that we get in those DSA rounds, right? So it's a good practice to time the questions that you're solving for practice. The second step is to maintain a list of all the questions that took you let's say more than about 30 minutes because I used to you know keep a track of all the questions that took me more than 30 minutes so you can do that as well. Keep a track of all the questions that took you more than 30 minutes to solve and uh, write down the time as well like how much time it took you to solve that question. Now once you list down all the questions along with the time it took you to solve you would get a general idea in the concepts that you're lacking right and the concepts that you need to practice so that leads us to the third step identify the topics that you're weak at and try to practice more and more questions on those topics and lastly the fourth step reattempt all the questions that you listed down in the second step reattempt all those questions and time those questions again and see how much progress you have made now this was personally my simple four step approach while i was you know preparing for interviews for dsa rounds now let's say after completing the fourth step, you still feel that there are some questions that are, that are still taking you more than 30 minutes and significantly more than 30 minutes. Then you would know the topics that you still, you know, need to work on, need to improve. So you can again repeat the fourth step process and you would feel determined to do that. If let's say after completing the fourth step, you feel well prepared, then you would also feel confident that you can crack any DSA round in any interview out there. And both of these feelings that you know, this four step process leaves you with the determination and the confidence. Both of them are important, right? So that was it for this video. These tips and tricks were based personally on my experience. But if you follow any other approach, then feel free to let me know in the comment section below. And uh, from next week, we are also going to start the bootcamp, the web development bootcamp. So make sure to stay tuned for that and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done already. And I'll see you in the next one.